Hey everyone, welcome to the Crypto Beach. Uh, today, we've got Zach, he's uh, there in Brooklyn, New York. He's gonna talk about how he got into crypto, some tips and trends that are really exciting to him. So with that said, Zach, go ahead, uh, take it away. Hey everybody, yeah, my name is uh, Zach Krevit. I'm a photographer and animator uh, living in Brooklyn. My um, pronouns are they, them. I um, have been a photographer for many years, about 15 years. Um, uh, I make a lot of work about the queer community, about, um, you know, the, the fetish community, about um, life and identity and struggle and crisis and, um, and all that. So i um, excited to dive into this with you. Awesome. Awesome. So thanks for that intro. Uh, just giving us a little context. How, uh, how did you get into crypto for the first time? Sure. Sure. So I primarily got into crypto through NFTs. Okay. Um, so um, I was upstate actually, and I had been talking about NFTs with a couple people um, just because I saw this emerging thing. And I've always been super curious about technology um, and, and art, especially and this idea of like being able to own my art more and um, explore my art and kind of not have to interact with the traditional gallery scene as much. Um, at the time I had a project called Towards Utopia, which is a nonprofit that we, we fundraise um, for, for various organizations. Um, and we had just wrapped up a print sale where we had fundraised for um, organizations that benefited black trans women and sex workers. Um, and that was really successful, you know, but that was this print art sale. It was really tricky. It was really hard to do, you know, mailing out all, like these thousands of prints to just like such a nightmare. Um, and my social media manager at the time was actually the now extremely famous, um, Diana Sinclair, who's a really fantastic photographer. Um, and I said, I said, you know, we, we both kind of noticed like, hey, there's really not a representation of, of, of black folks and artists in the space. Um, and I said, hey, you know, Diana, do you want to curate a, a show? Do you want to curate a show of black artists? We'll do it on Juneteenth. It'll be the first of its kind. Um, and we'll blow it, we'll blow it up, you know, we'll, 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 we'll make it huge. And, and we did, right? Those, those photos um, that artwork was on, they were on sit. They were on screens all over the city. Um, they had an IRL um, gallery exhibition in Union Square. Um, we partnered with Foundation, and we had a dedicated homepage on Foundation. Oh, wow. um, and it was awesome. We had a really successful event, and and really just from that project, I was I was totally in at that point. I really saw the power of crypto. I saw the the, the ability for it to um, really do a lot of hard work with regard to um, marginalized peoples of all sorts. Um, and I knew from there, I was like, all right, I'm, I'm investing in this thing. I'm going to really get into this. And so um, from there, I explored um, Ethereum at first. Um, I was holding the tiniest amount of Bitcoin at that time already um, and um, started exploring some other coins and things like that. And it's just been a journey ever since. Wow. That's a, that's a great, that's a great introduction to crypto. Uh, yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's uh, wrapped up in a lot of purpose and yeah. obviously community. Right. So that's really dope. Um, you know, when you first started getting into crypto, what are uh, some things that you felt you wish you knew um, that maybe you can share with the audience uh, in case they're they're thinking about jumping in? Sure. I mean, I think I think the thing that I wish I knew, I wish I had kind of um, stuck a little more vastly to was um, just just overcoming the fear and uncertainty and doubt, right? Overcoming the fun. Um, you know, I would be checking the prices constantly and I'd be trying to make these like tricky, like swing trades to like make a few points. Yeah. And um, I'm not someone that had heavily done the research or was really analyzing the charts well enough to actually be successfully swing trading. Um, and so there were a lot of trades that I screwed up. And if I had just held the freaking coins, I would be in a much better place, frankly, with a lot of those. Um, and so I think that was the big, that's the biggest tip is just hold your coins, <laughs> you know? So of course, like if, if, if you're someone that needs that money to pay rent or your daily activities, like you got to cash out and you got to cash out. There's absolutely no shame in that. Um, but I think for a casual investor, for someone who's not going to like be constantly learning how to read charts and all that stuff, um, just put in money and don't take it out until you have to, <laughs> hopefully in, yeah, yeah. you know, 20 years, 30 years, hundred years. Definitely. So, um, favorite, what's your favorite wallet? Did you get started on MetaMask or? 
Yeah. Yeah. Everyone. Yeah. I got started at MetaMask, of course. Um, I also have a Phantom wallet because um, one of the startups I work for um, deals a lot with Solana. Um, and so um, I, I get paid in USDT <laughs> okay. um, through Phantom specifically. Um, I also have um, some some Tezos. And so I, I work with, I, I, have, I use Kukai there. I think of, of all those, I mean, MetaMask is, is, is great. It does what I need it to do. Um, it doesn't have a, t it doesn't have some of the features that, that, you know, I think would really be useful, like, like, like rainbow or things like that. Like, I, I love the rainbow team. I think they're really incredible, yeah. but, but I, I keep it pretty simple. Yeah. Just, just met a mask. <laughs> you mentioned something really interesting, getting paid in USDT. Mm -hmm. um, this is obviously kind of where things are pointing to, but not everyone is, is receiving crypto and payment. Uh, so, so go ahead and share a little bit about that and how it worked sure so um i haven't talked much about this publicly but i'm doing some work behind the scenes with a company called keyhole club um you know uh sex work porn all these things like sexual freedom are really important to me and, and uplifting sex workers and like helping sex workers you know those are my friends sex workers are a lot of my friends in new york city um and it's really important to me to help uplift them and um this project really aims to do that so they're, they're kind of hoping to be sort of, you know, an OnlyFans killer, but basically what they're doing is they are working with an adult actor. You're minting NFTs. You're not minting NFTs of the actual adult content. You're getting like, you know, a car. The first one we did with these, these awesome like cars. So those are generative, you know, like, 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 like most, you know, um, generative PFP projects, but these are generative. Um, and then those NFTs get, give you access to the adult content. Along the way, there's like, phone, you know, you get, you get, there's rarity traits, right? So if you get like a really rare one, you get some extra gifts or some nudes. Um, but if you had a common one, maybe you're only getting a, 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 a thirst trap, but all of those open up access to a, like full length videos. Um, and it's been awesome. I mean, it's a really small team. It's a tiny team of like four people. Um, the founder is an amazing woman um, named Crass Kitty, shouts out to Crass. <laughs> um, and um, they've all been just really amazing to work with. Um, and I mean, it's all, you know, it's all very standardized. I mean, it just filled out W9 today. So, you know, I, I am going to be paying taxes on that. Of course. Um, I get paid in USDT to conv I, basically because I live in New York. Yeah. Um, I have to, if I, if I want to actually cash that out, I need to first convert it to Solana and then send the Solana to my Coinbase. Okay. Um, so yeah, sometimes I stake the soul in the meantime, <laughs> if I don't need it right away. Yeah. Other times, you know, that, that's become my primary income source. So I, I do cash it out pretty, pretty free, um, rapidly on that okay. point. Okay. This is really, this is a really interesting concept, right? Mm -hmm. You know, um, aside from the fact that it's uh, kind of a, <clears throat> a platform that, that really kind of gives you access to adult content, but it's just like, look at the model, right? Yeah. It reminds me of when in McDonald's, they used to have <laughs> Monopoly game sure and then when you got the drink you have to peel the back of the drink you know and you could right. win money or you could get like i don't know a happy i don't know but they were like these yeah. little prizes and then big prizes right but you had to buy the drink and then you, yeah. when you buy the drink you can peel it or the fries or whatever i remember always looking forward to that so what is really unique about what you're describing is this idea that you you receive the nft but then it's almost like a key to another door and you get to totally. pick up. Yeah, that's like, that's really dope. How's that yeah. going? Has it been successful? Have they been? Somewhat, somewhat. I mean, I okay. think we're facing a lot of struggles. Our Twitter was shadow banned like pretty early. Oh man, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I think that we're still kind of finding our footing. Um, they, the, the dev team spent a lot of time making a really amazing UX. Um, you know, I don't know how involved in NFTs specifically you are, but minting a lot of these projects, it's not a great experience. Mint the thing mm -hmm. maybe. You go, then you have to go over to your OpenSea, then you got to wait and refresh. Um, with this, you, you see these candy machine. And so you see it instantly. Um, you're, you're seeing your NFT like right away. You're seeing the traits and their rarity right away. Um, but it's essentially token gated porn. Um, and the other half of it, right? I love that McDonald's metaphor. I'm totally sending it to the team. Um, but it's, like, <laughs> imagine, it's like, imagine if, you know, the sticker that you pulled off, you could also now sell right? Because they're yeah. NFTs and because there's a secondary market, um, 
as a consumer of the adult content, you now have a potential to profit yourself, which has never been the case with consuming adult content, yeah. really consuming most kind of any content. Um, so yeah, it's going good. It's going good. It's, it's, it's still really new. I think we're still figuring out a lot of kinks, um, but I believe really strongly in the technology behind it. Um, and in this idea of making safer spaces that are profitable for sex workers so that they can do their craft in a safe way, in a legal way, in a way that um, is empowering to them. Definitely, definitely. Well said, well said. Um, on the topic, uh, it seems like we kind of got into some of the stuff that you're working on is super cool. Uh, but the trend uh, is that yeah. we're seeing more penetration you know, uh, at least in the entertainment space. Are there any mm -hmm. other spaces that you're seeing penetration in? I mean, you're really on the yeah. front lines from a creative standpoint. So go ahead and share. Sure. I mean, in what, in, in what is a boon to me is that it seems like photography right now is really a big, a big, big deal. Um, you know, people like Drifter Shoots, Diana Sinclair, um, you know, Justin Aversano the, have become these huge, huge names in the space. And I think they all three of them have really paved the way to make photography really hot right now, yeah. um, you know, which is great for me. My, my, my main issue is that I have so much work um, that I'm trying to figure out. I'm still trying to figure out exactly what I want to keep midday and what I want to, how I want to separate that. You know, I just got to, to, I'm on known origin. I'm on maker's place. I'm on foundation. So I'm like, I'm starting to kind of just kind of spin some wheels as far as what I should do. I'm kind of being overwhelmed with opportunity, um, but that's an abundance, right? I'm yeah, so I'm, I'm happy to have an abundance. That's great. Yeah. Um, but that's definitely the trend I'm seeing. I'm in the the raw DAO as well. I do some work with the raw DAO, which is a DAO that was funded after um, a really iconic and historic party bid happened with Justin Aversano's Twin Flames. Um, there was a party bid that was explicitly raised and um, with the, with the intention of creating a DAO treasury. So the raw DAO is setting out to create one of the largest collections of fine art photography. Um, and I, so that's my, that's, that's my first DAO, <laughs> which is really oh, exciting. Quick question, yeah. when you say party bid, what do you, yeah. what is that? Can you help Oh, sure. So there's a website called party bid. Okay. Um, and essentially um, they allow creators to fractionalize their work and open it up to um, multi, essentially, essentially it's a multi-sig purchase, right? So, um, you know, if there's a high value NFT, if there's enough people that all want an NFT, I mean, none of them singularly can afford it. They can pool their resources, buy the NFT together. Um, and then if that NFT is sold later, your gains are distributed pro rata, um, algorithmically you still have to go and claim your token nice. um so basically basically it's it's group ownership of an nft as well as um profit for if that if that nft sales so 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 i was briefly a, a punk holder very very briefly a fractional punk holder but a punk holder nonetheless. Yeah. um you know which, which can be really beneficial right there's all kinds of DeFi protocols that like if you have a token like that in your wallet it opens up some opportunities um and um you, it's just fun <laughs> because you get together, you kind of, you know, you rally the troops. You say like, you know, let's all, let's all do this. Let's all promote it on Twitter together. Ah, yes. um, and then you can get these huge, you know, for me, that's so exciting because it, it, it feels, um, feels new, right. It feels very yeah. like this idea of group ownership. Yeah. Um, it just feels so unique. It's such a, such a great use of the technology where, you know, people who historically could not maybe afford some of these larger price NFTs, um, now have an entryway to get there. So that's called party bid, I think dot app dot io maybe. <laughs> okay. Yeah, definitely. I'll look into it and add it to the, to the description. So um that being said, like it seems as though you have rapidly got involved in into into this crypto space. <laughs> and you know, there are just a lot of new things. As you mentioned before, uh there are a lot of opportunities, right? Overwhelmed mm -hmm. opportunities, right? But it's an abundance, right? So how do you stay you know, sane and just kind of keep tame all these different things coming your way? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely the hardest part. Um, you know, mental health in this space is a huge issue. Yep. Um, I think especially as artists, it can be so tough because we see our colleagues making it. You know, we see our colleagues making a million dollars, making a hundred thousand dollars. While I'm still here like trying to be like, buy my NFTs, yeah. like, please, yeah. you know? Um, yeah. 
because my work really does not, it, my work, I, I believe my work very strongly. Um, I think it's really incredible work, but it, it, it's, it's a lot for some people. <laughs> and I think a lot of people are a little afraid of having some of that work in their wallets and that's okay. You know, I'm holding out for my community. I, I sold a lot of those. I know people are out there. I'm actively mm-hmm. trying to bring more queer people into this space and find, find us. Um, how do I stay sane? Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> Um, I think it's just about building a thick skin in a lot of ways and kind of realizing that like there will, there, there are opportunities for everyone, you know, your time will come if you keep working out and building the community um, and just picking, I think not letting myself get too involved with too many projects at once. Um, I have ADHD. So, you know, I'm really eager to like say like yes to a million things. Um, but I think the biggest thing has just been like, Hey, let's, build a roadmap for yourself. If you're going to do R and D, like do it in a way that makes sense. You know, if you're going to work for different companies, don't, don't take on too much at once. Um, if it's going to be about, you know, building, building out my own NFT launches, you know, it's just about really, um, kind of keeping a a focus on what I'm doing, but also carving out time to be learning something new every day, but not necessarily jumping into it. I think that's when my urge is like, you know, as I'm learning about DeFi, of course, my like, first thought is like oh let's go find some pairing pools and let's go you know blah 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 do all the stuff right. but it's like no we're gonna take a breath we're going to wait a little bit we're not gonna FOMO into any coins we're not going to um you know just jump into anything really without thinking it over for for, for some good time yeah and I, th- I think that's what it is is just kind of resisting those um impulses you know yeah. and, and 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 approaching all this in an informed manner that um, is, is realistic to my ability for output. Yeah, that's perfectly said. So yeah, thanks. Thanks for that. I really hear, at least in the interviews that I've conducted so far, uh, the, the notion that, you know, all of these new things and uh, basically opportunities can be very overwhelming and taxing, especially for the creator, right? Mm-hmm. Because the creator is trying to survive, right? Uh, at, you know, at the end of the day, um, there's kind of like an attachment to the work that they produce, right? Like we, we want as creators to, to say that we can detach ourselves from those expectations, the external world, right? The external validation, but uh, it's very difficult. And um, there's a lot of opportunity with NFTs, but it doesn't happen immediately. It takes like six to eight months before you really yeah. start to see, uh, you know, um, like success. So, yeah. you know, in the meantime, it doesn't serve to be jumping around like you're saying. Right. And I think that's really important to highlight. You know, I, I think the other part of it is um, I don't think there are many people in this space right now that have experienced their colleagues' meteoric rise in front of their faces in the same way that I have. I mean, I'm so happy for Diana, like incredibly happy for her. I mentored her for years. I was her teacher in high school. Um, I like showed her video art and so many of these things. Um, and I always just knew that she was incredible art and incredible. Like I always had faith in her, you know, and then to see her go from like learning about NFTs to now selling this Whitney Houston NFT for a million dollars, that's incredible. Right. But of course it's going to be hard for me as well to witness and just see like, like, you know, it's, it's hard to not compare yourself to those around you. Yeah. But I think that like, because I've experienced this so intensely with someone uh, now, it's like not, nothing else is going to really be able to rattle me. You know, it's like, once you, once you experience that, it's like, you get through it, you take a breath and you focus on yourself and your own work. And, um, and you, you, you know, you have to experience genuine joy. Like I am genuinely so happy for every single one of my friends that have experienced success. Um, and now it's really just going to be about focusing and, um, looking for my own path to success as well. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Well said. Well, uh, thank you so much for hopping, hopping on the channel and sharing your thoughts. Thank you. Really appreciate it. And, uh, you know, yeah, you know, look forward to hearing more. We'll be retweeting your work and just kind great, of great. As to kind of the, the, the stuff that you're working on in your communities. So, uh, yeah, definitely. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Um, if you're out there watching, be sure to follow me on Twitter at Zach Krevit. That's Zach with a K, um, Z-A-K underscore K-R-E-V-I-T-T. Um, you know, retweet my pin post. I'm not sure when this is coming out, but whatever it is, go retweet yeah. it. Um, and <laughs> so um, 
And um, just look out for what I'm doing. I'm always working on community projects. I'm always looking to uplift um, the people around me. So, you know, feel free to shoot me a DM, show me your work, talk about art with me. I'm always game for, for making new friends. So uh, please feel free to reach out. And thanks for having me. I, I really appreciate you reaching out. Yeah, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to have you on. All right. Well, thanks. I know that sound. All right. <laughs>